fantastic numbers and where to find them. Written by Antonio Padilla, published in 2022 by Farrar, Strauss, and Giraud. Available for checkout right now at the Alice Pendleton Library, with a snippet read by Richard Coombs. The number lay there, brazen, taunting me from a tatty piece of paper that sat neatly on the ancient oak table. Zero. I'd never scored zero in a maths test before, but there was no mistaking my mark. The number was scrawled aggressively in red at the top of the coursework I'd handed in a week or so earlier. This was in my first term as a mathematics undergraduate at Cambridge University. I imagined the ghosts of the university's great mathematicians whispering their contempt. I was an imposter. I didn't know it at the time, but that coursework would prove to be a turning point. It would change my relationship with both maths and physics. The coursework had involved a mathematical proof. These usually begin with some assumptions, and from there, you infer a logical conclusion. For example, if you assume that Donald Trump was both orange and president of the United States, you may infer that there has been an orange president of the United States. My coursework had nothing to do with orange presidents, of course, but it did involve a series of mathematical statements that I'd connected with a clear and consistent argument. The Cambridge Don agreed. All the arguments were there, but he had still given me a zero. It turned out that his issue was with how I'd laid it all out on that tatty piece of paper. I was frustrated. I'd done the hard part in figuring out the solution to the coursework problem, and his complaint seemed petty. It was as if I'd scored a spectacular goal, only for the Don to check with the video assistant referee and rule it out for a marginal offside. But I now know why he did it. He was trying to teach me about rigor, trying to instill the mathematical pedantry that is an essential part of a mathematician's toolkit. Reluctantly, I became a pedant. But I also realized then that I needed a little more from mathematics. I needed it to have personality. I'd always loved numbers, but I wanted to bring them to life, to give them a purpose. And for that, I found that I needed physics. That is what this book is all about. The personality of numbers shining through in the physical world. Take Graham's number as an example. This is a leviathan, a number so large that it once had pride of place in the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest number to ever appear in a mathematical proof. It is named after the American mathematician and juggler Ron Graham, who was wonderfully pedantic in making mathematical use of it. But his pedantry is not what brings Graham's number to life. What brings it to life, or perhaps more accurately, death, is physics. You see, if you were to try and picture Graham's number in your head, its decimal representation written out in full, your head would collapse into a black hole. It's a condition known as black hole head death, and there is no known cure. In this book, I'm going to tell you why. In fact, I'm going to tell you more than why. I'm going to take you to a place where you will question things you'd always assume to be true. This journey through fantastic numbers will begin with the biggest number in the universe and a quest to understand what is known as the holographic truth. Are three dimensions just an illusion? Are we trapped inside a hologram? To understand this question, punch the air around you. You should probably make sure you aren't sitting too close to anyone, but punch forwards and backwards, left and right, and up and down. You can punch your way through three dimensions of space, three perpendicular directions. Or can you? The holographic truth asserts that one of these dimensions is a fake. It is as if the world is a 3D movie. The real images are trapped on a two-dimensional screen, but when the audience puts on their glasses, a 3D world suddenly emerges. In physics, as I will explain in the first half of this book, the 3D glasses are provided by gravity. It is gravity that creates the illusion of a third dimension. It was only by taking gravity to its extreme that we became aware of its sorcery. But then, this is a book of extremes. Our quest to understand the holographic truth begins, inevitably, 
with Albert Einstein, his genius, the perverse brilliance of relativity, and the underlying structure of space and time. Of course, I have a number for his genius. 1.0000000000000000858. And yes, I'm calling this a big number. I imagine you are skeptical, but hopefully I'll convince you that it is a huge number, at least if you think about the physics it represents. One man's ability to meddle with time.